Hi everyone, in today's video, I'm going to show you a script that I have written to help download a list of YouTube videos. If you're interested in this topic, please continue watching. This video utilizes YouTube DL and if you don't know what YouTube DL is, then you can watch my video in the link showing up above. Otherwise, let's get started. So the first thing you're going to need is a list of YouTube video URLs like this. You can input these manually or if you have a list of videos such as all videos from a channel or a playlist or even your watch later list, you can follow this instruction. So let me just get out of this and bring over my Chrome. And I'm going to go into YouTube. Now, once you're in here, I can go and find my channel. And let me, how do I go to my channel? There we go. So here's my channel. And then if you go to videos and hit play all, and, and then, then you say you stop this. While you're here, what you can do to get the list of all uh, YouTube video URLs, you can type in in the address bar view dash source colon and if you hit enter what it's going to give you is the source page of this page. Now you can also do instead and just pause this video, go right click and then go view page source to get the same result. Now once you're in here what you can do is you can copy all of this and then paste it into a notepad and then save this into where your script is saved so and call it view-source.txt now once you have done that you can go back out to the script and then run it and what it's going to do is going to it's going to extract all the youtube videos um, from this from the text file that you have provided and if you go to say for example let me just go and count how many results i've got using excel and there are 79 rows of results which should match if i go back out to here oh um i've got more than 79 but that's because if you go all the way down there's 79 here right it only shows you up to a certain a number of videos within a playlist so if you click the the last video on that screen then you can get the the next round of videos like that so you can also do this for um, for example a playlist that I've got here so if I go back to the playlist and paste it so this is my random auto archive stuff playlist you can type in view source and and, and go into the source page to, to do the same. So I'm just gonna update the source text file with that and then get out and then go back to the script and run it. And I should get the, um, how many is this? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And if I go back out to Chrome, there are seven videos in this playlist. So that's that's all correct. Also, you can just add random videos to your watch later list like this. I'm just going to go and add a random ones like, like that. One, two, three, and four. And then go to watch later. And then do the same thing. You go right click and view page source. And then copy that and paste that into or override everything inside the view source text file. And then run, run the script. That, then it's going to give you the list of URLs like that. Now, if you, if you hit this button, it's going to start downloading it. Now, one thing you have to do before you hit this download button is that you need to keep a copy of YouTube DL executable file within the same folder as where the script is saved. I created a video on this previously, so go and watch that if you want to learn where to download this YouTube DL executable file. Now, once this is ready, I can go ahead and start downloading it by pressing this button. It's going to run command prompts and then it's going to download the videos like that. There are a total of four videos that should be downloaded and um, it's going to download the files one by one and the GUI goes away upon downloading. You can see that there is a downloads 
folder that's created. If, so if you go into the downloads folder that is created, there will be four videos downloaded like this. Alright, so now you don't have to save this uh, view source text file as it is. If you prefer, you can uh, you can just copy the text into your clipboard and use this line of code instead of reading from the view source text file. So let me go back and let me go and grab a playlist. Hold on a second. Let's say uh, if I go to this playlist and type out view source, copy all of this then I've switched out this line of command with this one and let me just down uh, delete this and hit save and run it it's going to give me one two three four five six seven which represents the seven videos that I have in this playlist as of now now if you are so bothered with that you can also alternatively use this command this one URL download to file this command to directly download the source page information into a text file. So let me just go ahead and I'm just going to go ahead and bring up my code tester to uh, grab that your grab the URL of the source page of this playlist and then paste that into here. and change this to my folder where my script is saved and then if I hit run it will download the source page of the playlist but it didn't oh apologies you have to remove the view dash source in the URL to download the source page of of the page that you want to download from using this uh, URL download file command. So if I hit run now, there we go. So I've got view source text file created. And then let me just get out of this. And if I uncomment this and then hit play, I get the same number of URLs for the YouTube videos like this. Now, so that's how you use it. Because I haven't uploaded my text parsing tutorial on Oraki, I'm just going to really quickly go through how this works. And I can remove this. I should remove this. I don't need that. So the first thing it does is to read the content of the view source text file. And it's going to initialize these variables that I'm going to use. And then um, the, f the next thing it's going to do is it's going to loop through the output variable, which is the variable I'm storing this content of the text file into, and then pass it by the curly braces. And then where the A loop field includes index equals, it's going to add it into pass text one variable that I have initialized up here. And then it goes on to the second loop where it passes the past text one variable by the question mark which then looks for this string of text inside the a loop field if it is true if there is this string of text inside the a loop field it's going to grab um, the video id of the of the of the youtube video so which is going to be this so there's a pattern whereby they have this followed by or preceded by this youtube id which is used as a um, part of the url and then it the this one re removes the last line and then i think i can probably get rid of this as well and then it sorts to it doesn't perform the sort but this line of code um, removes duplicates within the items in that variable list of strings in that variable and then it creates a GUI and then it displays that GUI and then it goes into and move that across and then it goes into the label if you press that start download button and then it creates a download folder like that if it doesn't exist and this is the path that you have to provide in order to download the YouTube video um, naming the YouTube video as this. Now these are all variables um, that you have to pass to 
or arguments that you have to pass to the YouTube DL executable file to download it. Now, um, just just before I go into this part, this way of passing the text works as of April 2021, but because all these uh, platforms always, you, online platforms always update their HTML page source, i.e. the HTML structure and etc. This might not work if you're watching this in the future. Now, and then the last bit is I have this and this commented out. I'll, I'll explain to you what the differences are. This downloads all the videos at once, right? So it launches, uh, in this case, seven command prompts to download all the, this at once. Um, but this runway command makes it download one by one. And then the last one is also runway command. You saw the command prompt before and this one launches the command prompt minimize so you don't see the command prompt. Alright, this is it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.